it's almost Amazon Prime Day, and most people think of that day as a time to pick up big ticket items. But did you know that Amazon carries tons of supplies, tools, and basics for card makers? Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Keppel. In today's video, I'm gonna share my top 10 purchases at Amazon for card making. This way, if you want to add some of these items into your cart while you're doing your Prime Day shopping, you'll have lots of card making supplies coming your way very quickly. As we work through my top 10 list, if I've used these products in other videos, I will link to them down below so that you can check them out in more detail there. I'll also be sharing affiliate links down below and I have a storefront page where I share everything that I use from Amazon in card making. But for now, let's just jump right into the list and first up are label maker tapes or refills. I use my label maker a lot in my craft room. I like to organize and label everything including ink pads and stamps and dies and more and those refills can get really pricey. So I have found an off-brand refill that I think matches up to quality as far as strength and how it prints and everything else. So that is the first thing I'm going to add to my cart on Prime Day. Next up are binder rings. Now binder rings can be a storage and organization tool or they can help you keep your swatch books together. So I've shared before how I like to put washi tape on a large binder ring and then hang it on a clip on my storage cart. I've also purchased a bunch of smaller binder rings. These are great for ink swatch books and just other things that you want to keep on a ring that's smaller. And I'm keeping all of those little binder rings inside what is actually a Q-tip holder. I'm using some of these six pack of holders in my bathroom and then some of them in my craft room as well. Okay, next up are stamp and die pockets. I am still a big believer in the Avery L stamp and die pockets. They fit my organization bins perfectly. They fit my stamps and dies perfectly. And I found them to be incredibly strong and I've never had them tear on me. So that is a big winner as far as I'm concerned. I grabbed them several times throughout the year from Amazon. Next up is the Scotch foam roll. So I like to use dimension on my cards and I have found that the Scotch foam roll is my favorite way to do that. I really like this foam adhesive because it comes in this giant roll that lasts me a good long time. I also really like it because it tears easily. You don't have to cut it with a scissor if you don't want to. And it just has the perfect height or adds the perfect amount of dimension. Next up is white cardstock, and white cardstock is a staple for card makers. Once you find a white cardstock that works for you, sometimes it might be two different types of white cardstock that work for you, I recommend buying it in reams. It really saves you money in the long run, and it just keeps that cardstock on hand for when you need it to make your cards. So the two cardstocks that I love and use over and over again and buy in Ream are the Nina Solar White 110 pound cardstock. I use that for card panels. I also use it for card bases. And I like this cardstock because it is pure bright white. It is a nice heavyweight cardstock. It holds up to lots of different techniques and stamping really well, as well as ink blending and other things. When I started using foiling plates, I needed a new white cardstock. It wasn't working well with the Nina. So I turned to the Hammer Mill Color Copy Cover, which is a 100 pound cardstock and the brightness or whiteness is 100 as well. The great thing about the Hammer Mill, it is that it's ultra smooth. So the foiling goes on really beautifully and you get great effects with it. Next up is organization for your eight and a half by 11 colorful cardstock. You can see in the cubes behind me that I have all my colorful cardstock next to each other in these folders where you can see the colors from the outside. And I found these folders are super cheap. They are really durable. And I like that I have the opening on the front edge so I can see how much cardstock I have and the colors of the cardstock that I have available to me. 
If you want to know more about my colorful cardstock organization, I have an entire video about it and I will link to that down below in the YouTube description box below this video. Most of what I've covered so far are supplies that I buy throughout the year. The next one is a tool and it is a basic laminator. So I have showed in videos before how you can use a laminator with certain other products to create foiled effects. And I will link to those videos down below as well. But for now, let's just talk about the laminator in general. You don't need a pricey laminator to create foiled effects or to create laminated items in your craft room. So let me show you a little bit more about the Royal Sovereign Laminator that I use. This is the 12 inch Royal Sovereign Laminator, which you can get for $32.50 at Amazon. It has a hot and cold setting, it has a, a jam release lever in the back and an on off switch. I have used this particular Royal Sovereign Laminator for years with my foiling and never had an issue with it. It always works perfectly. Uh, but I just wanted to remind you that you could also just do basic laminating with it as well. So I made myself a little divider for one of my organizers and put a little tab on the top and then I'm just going to run it through the laminator inside a laminating pouch and when it comes out the other end it is all adhered and laminated perfectly for me to just trim down and then use right away. Of course I love having organizers that are dedicated to card making supplies. They make it really easy to fit things in your stash into an organized fashion. Sometimes though, it's nice to save a little money and to organize multiple types of supplies in your stash. That's when it's great to think outside the box and reach for some organizing supplies that are not specifically made for card makers, like these nail polish organizers. I use them for a ton of different supplies. Let me show you more. So you can see this is a four-tiered nail polish organizer. It's a clear acrylic plastic. In one of my organizers, I keep all my Distress Oxide refills. Those are the first two rows here. Then I also have some Distress Mica Stain Spray, and I keep all those in the third and fourth row, as well as some Dina Wakely Media Gloss Spray. So you can see this is kind of a mishmash of different things. In this one, I have all of my Distress Paints, which I've really started to collect, and you can see I've got the little dots on top, and then my Distress Inks, as well as my Distress Oxide Sprays. Those are probably the tightest fit, but they fit really fine in this organizer as well. The other organizer that I have, the same one, I have all of my Nouveau Drops or other crystalline drops from different manufacturers. I like to keep them all together and in rainbow order so I can just grab what I need. Speaking of organizers that are not necessarily made for card makers, I use lots of different fridge bins in my craft space to organize things like pattern paper, stencils, dies, stamps, and much more. And you can see an entire video where I used DIY or cheap alternatives for organizing right over here. Ever since I filmed a video where I shared my favorite white gel pen, I've had tons of you commiserate with me in the comments talking about struggles to find the perfect white gel pen. Well, the one that I love is the Pentel Milky Pop gel pen and I found it on Amazon. So I'll link to my favorite white gel pen video here and let me show you why I love this gel pen so much. I think the tip on this gel pen is the perfect size, not too bold, not too fine. I love that you don't need to prime this pen to get it flowing. It seems like the ink is always flowing to the nib no matter how long I've had it sitting on my shelf. I love that you can do swirls, dots, faux stitching, you can draw or doodle, and you can even color in those doodles. And this gel pen looks bright white and opaque on 
colorful cardstock and black cardstock as well. If you're a scrapbooker, you can use journaling with this white gel pen. And the other thing is that it shows up nicely on Copic colored or penciled colored cards. Whether you add some of these card making supplies to your Amazon cart before, during, or after Prime Day, I hope that they help you save a little bit of money and get some supplies into your stash that you will reach for again and again. Don't forget to look down below and check out some of the other videos that I linked that will give you more information about many of the items in my top 10 list. And if you head to my Amazon storefront, you'll see all the affiliate linked products there for you to check out. As always, I wanna thank you so much for stopping by and spending time with me today. Please stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you again soon. Pricey laminator, laminator, <laughs> to reach. <laughs> okay, one more time. One more time. Mm -hmm from the kit. <laughs> one more time. You get one more. Nope. <laughs> nope. But no. No, 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 no.